Hey, I'm Destiny, and I'm sorry, I'm a little bit sleepy, but I just have this idea that I really want to share with you guys and hear some of your feedback. Earlier tonight, I was talking with a friend about hoplophobia and how we've had conversations with people who don't share our enthusiasm for guns and how uncomfortable those conversations can be, especially in light of recent events. And I felt so compelled after that conversation that I decided that I want to make a video series about the subject. Some of the videos I want to do are going to be about how firearms enthusiasts can have positive and constructive conversations with people who are not firearms enthusiasts. But I've also, I would also like to make a video that is geared at those people who are afraid of firearms so that you can share it with your friends or your family or people you know who don't understand your support for, you know, and enthusiasm for your Second Amendment rights. This video, though, is going to more introduce the idea of hoplophobia. And um, I, when I first encountered it, because I grew up in a household that is um, friendly to firearms, learned safe firearms handling at a young age, but then when I went to school in Madison, it's a very liberal center in Wisconsin, and I just encountered a lot of people who didn't think the way I thought about firearms. They saw them as these like evil, aggressive entities that they caused violence, and I just didn't see things the same way, and I had a hard time understanding where they were coming from. And that's what prompted me to do some more research on other people who are afraid of firearms. And I found um, some work by Jeff Cooper, who actually coined the phrase hoplophobia. Um, well, from hoplon, meaning weapon, phobos, fear. And his idea was that it is this deeply ingrained fear of this inanimate object that was completely irrational that leads people to fear guns that just these are people who logic cannot be used to sway their decisions and he was then passionate about getting people like this separated from the legislation process associated with um, firearms but then i looked and i found this article by dr susan thompson who looks at the idea of hoplophobia from a more medical perspective and she said that medical it's not so much a mental illness as Cooper suggested, but more like self-defense mechanisms, a way of projecting internal fears at this inanimate object. She kind of introduces some of the ideas and some of the mindsets behind why people are afraid of firearms. And then she also covered some constructive ideas for how to approach conversations with people who are coming from that adversarial standpoint of where they disagree with you and they don't they don't want to have you know positive experiences with firearms she gave some kind of general suggestions like providing corrective experiences and being patient and gentle and understanding not um, getting frustrated or attacking anti-gunners for their viewpoints and kind of posing more open-ended questions so that they can think about and re-examine their, their viewpoints. And a lot of the ideas she presents in this essay I thought had application in, in practical real life. Because I'm sure especially with how the anti-gun versus pro-gun conversations have been lately I'm having more and more of these discussions with people, friends, and just people who know I'm interested in firearms about why do I like guns? And oh, one of these people who I was having, I was kind of sharing this experience with is um, one of my friends here on YouTube, Mr. Colleen Noir. But instead of having me recap our conversation, I would rather just ask him directly and share with you guys here. Mr. Colleen Noir, how do you talk with people who are afraid of guns? And how have those conversations been recently? For anyone having a conversation about guns with someone who is afraid of them, it can be one of the most frustrating things you ever do. In some cases, 
I'd be better off trying to convince someone that the sky isn't blue than try to convince them about firearms. In an ideal situation, you would invite that person to go with you to the range and let them shoot in a controlled, comfortable environment, as a lot of fears that people have about guns are born from sheer ignorance. Most people who are afraid of the guns and shoot for the first time are floored when they go to a shooting range and see all the insanely normal people there also there to shoot. And once they get over that initial fear and learn to enjoy it for what it is, they usually turn into some of the biggest gun advocates that you know. On the other hand, when you have somebody who not only has a gun phobia, but also refuses to entertain going to the range, what you do then is you put them in a car, blindfold them, drive them over to Juarez, Mexico, and let them chill out there for a little bit. And at some point, they'll probably be running back to you screaming and crying and begging you for a gun. Okay, maybe that's a little much. But honestly, for me dealing with someone like this, I use a ton of logic, a bunch of patience, and a healthy dose of empathy. And absolutely no pride. I think as pro-gunners, we tend to forget that it's not always a competition about trying to prove them wrong as much as it is us disproving the mythical evil that they've attributed to the gun. I also realize that I also realize that not everyone can be talked down from the ledge. Much like that guy at the nightclub who's trying to pick up women, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter what you have, no matter what you look like, there will always be those girls who are just simply not into you. And you should just accept that and keep it moving. I know a lot of people say you can't reason with emotion, but I think no matter what, logic is all we really have because we don't need to try to trick people into understanding firearms. We don't need to pull at their emotions. Stick to the truth because it's the truth. We as programmers don't have anything to hide. The statistics are there. The real world examples are there. And we need to just trust and understand that after the conversation, whoever you're dealing with is going to go back and have an honest conversation with themselves that their pride won't let them have in front of you. Most people who have a phobia of guns have attached a level of insecurity to that gun, whether it be a feeling of powerlessness while they're being in the same room with someone who has a gun or they associate the pain or sorrow or sadness that they have from losing a family member due to violence. They may never see the person who committed the violent act, and they will never see the loved one that they lost, but they can always see a gun. And so what they end up doing is they transfer that pain and that sorrow to the gun, and thus you get the irrational personification of guns. They say things like they're evil, they're bad, they're dangerous, and they're deadly, etc., etc., etc. But of course, we all know that they're just simply plastics and metal. So I just try to be patient and rebut the irrational arguments they make with a level head. It's going to be very, very rare that you encounter a situation where the person just outright admits that, you know what, you're right and I agree with everything you're saying. Actually, to the contrary, you're probably going to leave the situation feeling like you've accomplished absolutely nothing. But if you keep a level head and just present your position, when the logic finally sets in, and it will, they won't have pride holding them back from admitting that you were making good points because you didn't turn it into a full-blown argument and attack them. With the recent events, everyone is gassed up, ready to debate, and I've gotten into some pretty heated debates, and people are just angry about what happened and want to do something about it. But it's going to be us that have to keep a level head and break it all down and remove the emotion from the logic and show them that their fear is irrational. And that the very thing that they fear can in fact empower them and bring them enjoyment and teach them to appreciate life. Because in my mind, there's no better way to appreciate life than to have the power to take it away and protect it with the same tool.